Okay, everybody, I'm back. I've had a very wild semester, or second half of the year. I got poison oak in my eye because I think I dropped my sunglasses in a very potent pile of poison oak. Here's what it looked like a couple days ago, just to really get it out there. But now I'm like basically recovered, but I am on steroids, okay? So I'm on performance enhancing drugs for the duration of this video. Okay, we're back on track. We're getting you your master's degree in fine art. Critiquing. It's the biggest part of art school probably, besides the making of the art. And why do we do it, okay? Double-edged sword, okay? On the one hand, you want feedback about your work. And it's not that you don't just want affirmation and a pat on the back. I don't think that's a helpful critique, just like when everyone's just sucking each other's dicks and saying like, wow, we're all great artists, hooray, nothing to change, no way to grow, okay? So when, we're, when our work is getting critiqued, what we're hoping to do is to understand it better. Sometimes we're in the studio, we're making all these decisions that we think are just intuitive, but the critique, maybe it's going to help us understand what in our creative process is intentional, what things do we do just out of habit, um, you know, and then kind of just going deep into the work and probing each part, okay? And so it can be daunting. And I think in art school a lot too, I think there can be a move to avoid vulnerability when we're showing our work or to make work that's kind of like cynical um, and putting a lot of guards up. But I hope when I'm facilitating a critique to create an environment that is thinking critically but also, you know, engendering respect for each other. And that's like intellectual respect but also like compassion to not be a total douche but I feel like people usually in art school at least in my experience are very supportive of each other which also can be limiting like can stand in, in, in the way of good critique another thing that the person being whose work is being critiqued um, will maybe be able to see what are the like recurring themes or imagery or things that come up and repeat in their work that maybe they didn't realize and then also like accidents. Like maybe you make a work and it is bringing up all the symbolism or connotations that you didn't know were there. I think that's one of the most valuable things about critique is when you're like, oh shit, like why, um, maybe you accidentally make some work that is like kind of borderline offensive or like racist or misogynist or something and you weren't thinking that at all and better to like sort that out with a group of critiquers that you hopefully trust rather than putting that out in a fucking exhibition and looking like a real asshole, you know, if you didn't want to. But I think the most valuable part of critique is not to the person whose work is being looked at, but to the people looking at the work, okay? I think the most valuable part of critique is that the viewers are forced to look at work that maybe they wouldn't naturally gravitate towards as their, like, favorite shit. Um, and force them, and especially in like a long form critique where you're really spending time, to really like dive in and deepen the way you look at art or the world, right? Where you really have to be considerate. Things that I think aren't helpful in critique, remaking the work. You want to, I encourage critiquers to focus on what is actually there. Um, and not be like, oh, I wish this was on this side, or you could, I, you know, make it more high contrast, or this or that. Where, especially in an art school setting, everyone's an artist. Everyone has their own unique individual vision of what they want artworks to be, because we're all making art all the time. So we have to kind of put the brakes on ourselves as creator and be observer, where we're actually diving into what's actually there and not imagining what could be. Um, and as I said, um, where it just turns into a circle jerk, that's never helpful. 
you know. I mean, it is nice to hear that people like what you do, but I don't think critique is the place for that. Stay after the critique, be like, wow, I really liked your work, whatever. It just, and critique, that's just not helpful. When I do have students be like, oh, I really like the colors you chose, or oh, I really like, you know, the fish scales, or whatever, I immediately just say, okay, why? Like, what about it? Where we're kind of like digging into it a little more. Or where we're kind of like digging into what specifically is in the piece, you know, that is like coming out and making an impression on the viewer. Just don't suck each other's dick. Okay, the other thing about like the whole disregarding what is like, I like it, I hate it. Okay, I'm just putting this out there, it's gonna sound really pretentious because it's a French guy, but this dude, Pierre Bourdieu, wrote this book called Distinction, okay, and he was a French sociologist and wrote this whole long book about how basically um, Kant, remember Kant, he's like a philosopher from the back in the day, he had this whole idea that like to really appreciate art or like be a true pure viewer of art, you had to be um, disinterested and Bourdieu came back in and said actually that whole disinterested pure eye that Kant was talking about to be like the pure perfect art viewer is all based on class and you can and he did all these studies where he went and surveyed people on like you know what level of art they like like how much they go to a museum or like how highbrow the music they listen to all these things like music clothes um, food all this stuff is completely dictated by your class background so when we're looking at something and making judgments about whether it's good or bad there's not a pure objective opinion there you're just bringing your own background which is the dictator of your taste to wh whoever you're giving this um, opinion to or whatever so the hope is that we can create and critique a way of talking about work where hopefully we can address what the artist's intentions were rather than putting all our taste and opinions on the work and trying to, you know, form it into our idea of what it should be. So when I'm working with students, I use this method that um, was uh, started by this like choreographer performance woman. Uh, named Liz Lerman. I heard about it from my friend Sophia Cleary um, and she had like a, a, a crit group in New York where they used it and basically Liz Lerman has a response method where it's in four stages. The first stage is statements of meaning and this is usually with performance work but I've used it with other kinds of work and I think it works okay. I, I feel like it works really well with performance and video but um, I don't know it's worked well with other art too. Anyhow, okay, so the first step is statements of meaning, and that is where the critiquers will say what in the work had meaning to them, what feelings did it evoke, and, you know, if something's really abstract and that, like, especially, like, if it's an abstract painting and there's no discernible representational symbols or anything like that, um, you're not going to be like, oh, the, you know, uh, it really brought up, like, you know, the idea of the Vietnam War and its impact on, you know, queer women in America, you know, um, you're going to have to kind of go in for more like what's the feeling, what is the, you know, the vibe that you're getting off of it. Um, so statements of meaning, that can be kind of, it's more challenging when the work doesn't have any like clear thing to grasp onto. But I think that can be very interesting where you're really having to go deep on something um, that, you know, that's when you're really forced to grasp onto, grasp onto things and look deeply. The second step is the artist asks questions to the reviewers. And that is good because it kind of then starts to guide the conversation where you're kind of maybe through these questions, the artist is kind of revealing what their intention was. Um, with the work because you don't want the artist to just say this is what the works about before the the audience has the ability to kind of form their own interpretation then the reviewers ask neutral questions to the artist so that means you can't couch an opinion in the question I'm really really getting there guys okay 
Then the final part is permissioned opinions. Now this word is always funny to do in class because it makes it so that the reviewers um, ask permission to give an opinion about the work. Um, and so you would say like, I have an opinion about the triangles. Uh, would you like to hear it? And then usually, in my experience with students, they always say yes. I've only had one time where a student said no to one of these permission opinions. But I think it's important, especially with performance work or something where you've spent a lot of time already, if there's a part where that you've been agonizing over and you finally feel like you've sorted it out and you don't need any more feedback, that's fine. You know, if they're like, oh, the part where you were dribbling the basketball, I have an opinion about that. And you're like, I fucking spent a year sorting that out. That part is done. I don't need to hear an opinion about that. That I get. Um, so that's out there. So this is a good method. I'll put a link uh, down in the zone. Uh, if anybody wants to try this, if you're making art and you want to have a little crit group, I think that would be really helpful. Okay, so a few people sent in work for me to look at. And um, it's very funny to me that people did that. I would never do that. <laughs> it sounds like a nightmare just to send work for me to talk about in a video. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do it for Adam Royer. Let's take a look. So Adam Royer sent in some work. I don't know what's knocking. There's like construction going on at my apartment. And Wally hates it. So we're just going to bear through. Okay, so Adam Royer sent this in. I painted it, this is what he says, I painted it on a big piece of Amazon packing paper that I just sewed. I hope I make the cut for your critique. The painting is called Bosque Fosk, which is Catalan for dark forest. So yeah, if I was in a, when I have crits with students, the only thing I have the artist say at the beginning is um, if they they can share the media, the what, how the work, what the work is made of, and then if it's like a object base work and then um, a title if they want to give it yes okay because those are the things you'd see in an exhibition like on the placard um, you wouldn't need the artist there to tell you that okay so I'm looking at this it looks from this image it looks like it's a work in progress just because we're in like a studio setting and um, I got to say right off the bat there is I there's a discernible figure right with hands up grasping the head and there is a lot of very intense gestural line work at the top which and it is dark right with high contrast between the black and white and so I'm going to say to me when I'm looking at this if I'm going to make a statement of meaning it looks like anxiety now always we're going to bring our own baggage with us and I feel like if a work has the option to be related to anxiety I'm gonna usually make that that's gonna come out to me in my interpretation of the meaning of the work. Very detailed line work on the arms and around the kind of sun sunlight head which to me adds even more to like the kind of dynamic um, intensity where we have like a lot of really intense busy uh, line work just adding to the kind of like tightly wound everything's kind of like jittering right because it's like high contrast black and white there's a lot of like scintillation um, where things are like vibrating a little bit and then this like um, like looks like a heart uh, kind of it's like located in like where maybe the heart would be we have this red form um, and the interplay between the yellow and red circles, and then this circle up in the top right corner, um, repeating circle imagery. And so to me, it's called dark forest. There's a lot of intensity. The grasping looks like intense desperation. I also think there's a lot of detail here that I might not be picking up just from this digital image um, in the body. Oh, and I'm also just now realizing all these, like, there's the faces that are going around the yellow area that go from happy to sad in kind of a spectrum. It's very intense. It's a very intense image. Um, I also think it's interesting the interplay between the parts that seem super controlled. You know, like the all the line work in the arm seems like it's very 
uh, controlled where the no lines are kind of intersecting with each other. They're all like spaced, they have like perfect spacing around them. And then the very gestural part um, up in the top um, that also creates kind of a kind of a tension between those two ways of mark making. Um, so, so that's what I would basically say for my statement of meaning. Like we kind of go into formal elements where we're just kind of picking out, you know, what is it that I'm seeing? And um, if I'm getting some kind of meaning or interpretation from a work, how are the formal elements like informing that interpretation? Um, so then we go around, if there was a crit group, there'd be other people who would also talk, you know, about what is the meaning to them. You know, is there, maybe another person could see this like very warm yellow and the kind of symmetry and feel a kind of like, um, that can be comforting. Symmetry can be very calming. Um, so maybe everybody wouldn't go into like the anxiety deep end. <laughs> um, so there, so that's what we would do. Then the artist would have a chance. Now the artist isn't here to be able to pose questions to the group, but if Adam was here, he could say like, okay, uh, how do people interpret this red form? Um, you know, what do people think of that? Like, if you really wanted to hone in on that, because maybe there's something in that, in this piece when he was making it, that he was kind of unsure about. So, you know, um, those are the times where you can kind of be like, uh, you know, dig into the parts that you're kind of like, oh, I feel kind of unresolved because I'm still working on this, and I'd really like feedback on X. Once we had that, like, maybe we'd be drawing out a little bit more about what Adam was intending with this work. I might ask when it's time, so then the third step is asking questions to the artist. I might ask, what was the significance of making it on this packing paper? Was that just out of necessity because that's what you had around? Or is the packing paper have some kind of, like, conceptual content that's important to, um, like, whatever you're trying to get across to the viewer? Um, I think that if it's left like this, where we have the brown, um, ungessoed edge, um, you know, that's going to really change the meaning, um, if it's going to stay, I mean, that's going to carry its own kind of weight with it, if it's going to stay that way, like, what are we going to think about this piece if we know that this is patent paper, you know what I mean, versus just some, like, neutral white surface. I think other questions might kind of come out of what the artist's questions were. And then as far as opinions, it, especially in art school it always, there's often things go into a technical realm. I don't always think that's the most constructive um, place to keep the conversation. Um, and it is if you're really trying to like sort something out technically. Um, you know, I would just say there I feel like for my permission opinion, I'd be like, I have an opinion just about the composition in general, and uh, would you like to hear it? And then hopefully Adam would be like, yes or no. So if no, Adam, stop the video now. <laughs> okay. I think in terms of the composition, there's so much going on here and so much fine detail, especially in like the chest and our, uh, upper arms of this figure. You know, there it's interesting when there's this like rough versus delicate like the very rough application on the top and this like delicate stippling it's like pushing me away and it's like drawing me in in the delicate parts and kind of like pushing me away to be able to see like the broader gestures up in the in the more gestural parts um and maybe that's like an interesting interplay or maybe that's something we want to like kind of like calm down um it does seem like a very active piece that is like um, maybe confronting the viewer in like an intense way and maybe we want to have this kind of um, disjuncture between the mark making. Um, so that's just something that came out to me as like kind of a conflict that is like inside the piece. So that's my basic ass. <laughs> that's my basic like kind of how I try to do critiques in class. So everybody, get out there, get a critique group together, make some artwork, go share it with people, go do this critique process, like, at, if you want to go to an art show and, you know, just start looking at things and being like, okay, I'm gonna fucking look at this for, like, a long time, and I'm gonna, like, try to talk about it in a real way where I'm really looking at every fucking thing, you know what I mean? Because, like, a fucking 
what do they say? It's like five seconds people spend on a piece of artwork in a museum. And like, whatever. Like, the who gives a shit? What did they fucking do to earn you to look at it forever? But it's not for them. It's for you. It's for you to look more deeply at the fucking world around you and take some time to, you know... And this is, I mean, it just goes for anything. Like, the more deeply you consider the world around you, the more enriched you're going to be. Hopefully. Right? i got to fucking show up. If you're in the Bay Area, you want to go critique my weird-ass work, link down below to where the fuck it is. 323 10th Street in San Francisco. It's a weird show. Here's a still from one of my videos in it. Okay. Okay, what's next in your MFA? Maybe next time we'll do writing a fucking artist statement. That's a fucking nightmare. So if you want to send in an artist statement, I'll fucking review that. Okay, I'm very glad I finally made this video. It's been weighing on me forever. And stay away from poison oak. Stay indoors.